Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Happy Wednesday. It is box day. So we are going to make a really quick box for some tea bags. Now, um, since it's March, you know, St. Patrick's Day is March, you can get Irish breakfast tea. How fun would that be? Um, I just don't have any right now. So I have English breakfast, but definitely get the Irish breakfast tea. Um, that'd be really, really fun. I'm using Garden Green from Stampin' Up. Some gold from Michaels. This is the old Stampin' Up um, Lucky Clover. You can't get it anymore, but you can use any shamrock um, stamp set. Um, cut it from your cutting machine, whatever you want. All right. We're going to do a fold flat box because that's going to be our quickest. So we're going to take out our pink book. Now, if you ordered your pink book, let me see, February, between January, the end of January and February, you're going to get this one. This is the new one. Um, it's the same on the inside. It's just the outside is different. I changed the name to fold flat box as opposed to just box template. So whichever one you have, it's the same thing. Just one's dark pink and one's light pink. So there you go. Whichever book you have. All right. So let me find a blank page here. I'm almost done with this one. All right. We're going to measure our tea bags. Um, this is specifically for the Twinings English breakfast, but the Twinings Irish breakfast is going to be the same. They're about two and a half. Oh, I'm gonna have to do eights. Boo. That's okay. By three. So to give my box a little bit of room, I'm gonna call this two and five eighths by three. By, I'm gonna put two. Let's do three. We can, so I'm gonna do it by half an inch. So however many will fit in there by half an inch. All right. So I know that my thickness is half an inch. So that's where I need to put all of those. I want my closure flap to be half an inch. That's just what I'm comfortable with. My left to right is gonna be two and five eighths. And my up and down is going to be three. Yeah, that'll work perfectly. Okay, so we're going to get our little decimal cheat sheet out. Okay, so here it is. So where's my calculator? Right here. And two color pens. Right. All right. Let's go ahead and, I don't even know why I skipped the whole page. Let's math our left to right. So we have 0.5 plus 2 and 5 eighths, which would be 2.625 plus 0.5 plus 2.625 plus 0.5 equals six and three quarters by, let's do our up and down, three, four, five. That was easy. Okay, so on our long side, we're gonna score it at half an inch. So 0.5 plus 2.625, um, three and an eighth. Um, three and five eighths. One, two, three, six, two, five. Equals and six and a quarter. And then on the short side, you need half an inch and one on either side. Okay. Here we go. 
So it looks like you can only get one box out of a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Hmm. That's okay. I'm only making one, so. All right, here we go. So. Actually, no, I'm lying. You get two out of one sheet of paper. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cut it at five on the long side and then six and three quarters on the, sh the short side. Okay, so put your six and three quarters side at the top of your scoreboard or your paper trimmer, and you're going to score it at half an inch. three and an eighth, three and five eighths, one, three, five, and six and a quarter. Okay. And on the short side, you're going to score it at half an inch. And one, on both sides, half an inch, and one, which for my scoreboard users, you are half an inch, one, four, and four and a half. Four and four and a half. Okay, perfect. So we have our box here and this is starting position. You're gonna put your um, double score lines on the top and um, yeah. All right, so if you can see these score lines, we don't need the four um, boxes on the top right and the four boxes on the top left. So square, square, rectangle, 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 square, square. So you don't need one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. So scissors. And we're just going to cut those four boxes completely out. We're going to go ahead and miter this little piece right here. And I'm going to cut off just a tiny sliver only because I know I overscored this. <laughs> so I cut off a little sliver. All right, so now you have something that looks like this. So now we need to work on these score lines. So we're going to cut up the score line, cut off half. And you're going to miter and miter, okay? This um, next score line here, cut up the score line, cut off half, miter and miter. What you do on the bottom, you need to do on the top and vice versa, flip it over, score line, half, Miter and miter. Score line, half, miter, and miter. Corner rounder, round your corners in the middle panel there. Whatever corner rounder you have. Go ahead and um, get your bone folder and burnish your lines if you haven't already done that. 
And what is going to make this so easy and cost efficient is that we're going to go ahead and just stamp a, um, a background and we're going to punch out a shamrock. That is it. This is going to be like the so easy um, thing to do here. And this is, I'm actually, I am going to mass produce about 20 of these. And so this is why I need it to be super simple. All right, I'm going to take a piece of gold shiny paper, take a shamrock punch. Again, this is retired, but you can use any shamrock. And I'm just going to put it in the center, just like that. Um, if you want to put words on there, you can. Um, let me see. I'm just going to get my ink pads. You know what? I'm getting just my Versamark. Here we go. Versamark. So I can do tone on tone. See how old this is? It's red rubber. All right, and before I add that on, I'm gonna take my stamp and I'm just stamping on Versamark. Makes it so um, it's tone on tone. You can always use your embossing powders, but if you're making a bunch of these for your kid's classroom or craft fairs, they're going to throw it away. So just um, make it simple. That's it. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do the back, too. You do have to let this dry because it is a kind of like a glue for some mark use. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. All right, so the front is all dry, so we're going to go back to starting position. I'm going to flip over the little flap over here, the half an inch flap. Take my glue. Add some glue. And fold over. Let it dry. I guess I could have added more on the sides. It don't matter. Okay, so your box is done. You're gonna add your tea bags. Oh, first we gotta close one of the ends. Make sure it works. Oh yeah, we can definitely add three. And maybe four. You can add four if you turn the last one upside down. But I think three is enough. These would be great for your coworkers. There we go. And then I'm going to add my shamrock. Like I said, you can definitely add words to it. Um, you know, good luck or any of your stamp set words, but you are done. That is it. Your whole box decorated 13 minutes. They're pretty fast when you, you know, so when you have the measurements up front, you can, you know, cut all the boxes first, decorate them, punch out your shamrocks or cut them out of your cutting machine, and you're good to go. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.